Mm. Talking about you, you know, you mentioned the summer that we had spending um, 100, 100, over one hundred fifty million on new players. It was reported. Uh, I, I, I was in the Athletic um, a few months ago talking about the Richarlison deal. Well, I'll quote: um, "It said Daniel Levy was the driving force behind the signing of Richarlison after noticing Everton could have been looking at a cash in hand um, ahead of rival ahead of interested clubs." Um, obviously, with that, you know, if you're if we're saying Daniel Levy was the driving force behind that deal, we know Conte has mentioned that Spence was a club signing. Um, he's mentioned that Dan Juma is a player that has been brought in and doesn't really fit his system. It begs the question. Question. Do you think that a lot of the transfers we made, apart from obviously we know Ivan Perisic was definitely someone that Conte definitely wanted, but do we think that the transfers made in the summer were geared towards how they were going to, like, were they strategic moves geared towards how these players were going to fit into Conte's system? Or do you think the club just made signings because they saw these good players available and they thought they would be good for the club rather than actually strategic moves to fit Conte's system? Yeah, well, that disconnect that I think exists or has existed between Con what uh, what Conte wants and what, let's say, the director of football, Fabio Paratici, wants is a really big issue because you look at the most successful recruitment operations and almost always there's, an, there's alignment there between head coach, director of football, chairman. It should really be throughout the club. And, you know, certainly City have that, but obviously they're sort of bankrolled by a nation state slightly mm -hmm. different. But let's say a club like Arsenal, who are a pretty good comparison with Spurs, they spend a similar amount of money, they're generally in a similar place in the food chain, you know, battling for around fourth, has tended to be where both clubs are. And that club, after years of terrible recruitment, where there wasn't this connection between head coach and director of football now seems to really have that and has a very clear strategy i, I just didn't see that you know, at spurs you know last season t take the left wing backs there's a fourth there was a 14 year age gap between destiny Adogi, who was a more of a strategy signing and ivan perisic now that's fine in a way if that's a kind of agreed strategy that you're trying to secure secure the future and the present but it didn't feel like that it just felt like two competing strategies and then you have someone like jed spence who again fits more into the club signing to use um, conte's phrase and it's just a bit of a mess because then you're bringing in players who the head coach doesn't really want we saw that under jose Mourinho as well there were players brought in that weren't really ones he particularly wanted and then he doesn't play them much and it's no good for anyone so i definitely think when they are dissecting, when the club is dissecting where it went wrong with Conte, I hope that they take some of the lessons um, that I've just said there, or, you know, that seem, I think, to a lot of people from outside, fairly obvious. You know, another big one would be if you're going to employ a win now manager, you kind of need to sign win now players. That's how Conte, that's how Mourinho have generally been successful. So, why, if you've got that kind of manager, you know you know what they want they want guys like Ivan Perisic they want people at, you know ideally at peak age but if not people who are experienced winners in inverted commas so yeah I think there was that disconnect I think that is a big reason for why that transfer window ends up looking quite weird and a bit of a mess um when at the time it felt like quite positive because they had spent quite a lot of money and brought quite a lot of good players in I don't understand that though. Like, how can there be a disconnect between Paratici and Conte when you know they're so their visions are so much aligned? They've worked together at previous clubs. They're good friends. I mean, how how does that even come about? How how does their visions not align at this football club? It doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah, well, I guess if you think about it, they they have slightly. Di There's always a bit of a tension between director of football and head coach because head coach his job is dependent on the immediate term so you know yes ideally they they should also have a view of what's going to happen in the future but there's a good chance they're not going to be there so if you imagine using that left wing back um example if you're antonio conte you are thinking in may june what's my team going to be for the first game of the season i need it to be a team that can go and, let's say we've got a hard away game i need someone who can go uh you know go and slot in straight away and we can win that game if you're Paratici, it's probably more, well, I want to I want to be building a team. I want to be signing players with resale value, et cetera, et cetera. 
So your priorities are always going to be slightly different, but you'd hope that the manager would feel that he is there also for the long term. And so he has an eye on, okay, but what about next season? What about the season after? The problem that was so obvious in this aspect is that Conte never really gave the impression he was going to be there for the long term. That was very short. And so, of course, he was kind of only really thinking about tomorrow rather than next year or two years away. And so I think that's where the disconnect came from. And also, just generally, he is someone who, you know, he he's never been one particularly to play young players, um, you know, to, to trust them. He'd rather go for the tried and tested. Um, and and that's, where you, that's why you need to think carefully about that alignment between director of football and head coach and also what's your overall strategy is it win now or is it Tottenham DNA or is it somewhere in between <laughs> you know you need to work that out and then I don't make even sure think Daniel Levy knows that yeah I mean that's the thing you you just you need to be clear on that and then you need to make appointments that reflect it 